summer solstice in the high Arctic. The sun hasn't slept for two months. Day, night, life is precious and intense. Resolute Bay is the starting point for those heading into the polar wilderness. There's never been a group quite like this. Each one of these teenagers has come through a ferocious battle. They've won the battle, but not the war. Sébastien Sicard came down with acute Hodgkin disease two years ago. Melissa Gross has fought lymphoma, another deadly cancer. Marie-Hélène Côté has a similar cancer. She's fought back twice. Six months ago, she had a bone marrow transplant. But now they're on their way to a place where physical strength and endurance are required. Ellesmere National Park is 4,000 kilometers north of Ottawa, only 600 from the North Pole. Only 60 or 70 visitors a year make it this far. Only months ago, their lives hung in the balance. The man who has brought the group here lives in a world of extremes. He's their doctor, a pediatric oncologist at the Hospital for Sick Children in Toronto. That's frontline duty, and that's why he's brought these teens with cancer to the edge of the planet. We talked about pushing the limit. Pushing the limit so we're going to cure more patients. Pushing the limit so we're going to reintegrate them in the society. Pushing the limit so as much as we can to extract strength and give them confidence in the future. Adventure to make his charges stronger. The doctor calls it adventure therapy. Now this. The plane will pick them up in 10 days. Until then, they're on their own, here on top of the world. They're 11 teenagers, 14 to 18, from across Canada. The adults in the group are doctors, nurses, and guides. Beginning tomorrow, they'll be hiking through a landscape so rugged that very few healthy teenagers would care to come here. It's night, but too bright to sleep. There are new friends to check out. Little room for bad dreams. I don't know what to expect. And yesterday when we flew through the mountains and everything, that was amazing because I've never seen anything like that. And it's huge, larger than life. We're going to do it. It's uh, so fantastic out here, so beautiful. Everyone here just is really great. They seem like they're a lot of fun. It's um, really good to know that other people have, have suffered what you've suffered and then and lived through it as well. It's going to be a great trip because we got a lot of crazy people. <laughs> always, we, we have to say, always be prepared for the worst and don't let it happen. So what we'll do, we prevent blister. So tomorrow and two days from now, one after so one. On a really C'est tangible, c'est quelque chose que tu, tu vois. Puis... On, est, on est tous des jeunes, ça paraît plus qu'on a eu le cancer, mais on le sent. On le sent qu'il y a quelque chose qui est installé. Puis... I wanted to think, it's very warm. Yeah, we're going to do it, all of us together, I'm... we're going to do it. You can't give up, we have to do it. Just same as, same as being sick, you can't give up, you have to do it. The second night under the midnight sun, it's quiet around the tents. 
Next morning, the strain of the expedition shows. Josiane is tired because she's realizing that her chemo affected her health more than she thought. It's out of shape. Peter Steves, he just has a cold and he's short of breath. He's a bit, uh, yeah, he's not in shape. So he has to go slowly. Sébastien told us he, he was afraid to get depressed. He said that last night. And this morning he woke up, he said, I didn't sleep all night, and he's very fragile. The only thing he wants is to go to bed tonight. To get their bearings, they need to get out of the canyon. It's steeper than yesterday. A nasty surprise. <laughs> Josiane Sorel almost didn't make the expedition. Ben oui, parce que ça fait pas longtemps que j'ai fini mes mes traitements, puis ça a forcé pour que je vienne. Mais je suis là. C'est dur, mais moi je suis vraiment venue ici pour prouver aux autres qu'on était capable de de se surpasser malgré ça, puis que on était quand même aussi fort malgré ça, puis que on allait être capable de continuer de vivre pareil. Day three, the guides are off looking for a new route. The teens get to just hang out. She's like, well, what's she going to be like in six months? I'm like, okay. So she gets off the phone. And I said, Mom, do I have to lose my hair? And she's like, yeah. So that's how I found out. And like that was the, one of the hardest things. You know, you feel so bad. And like if you do go out, people just look at you. And like it, it adds up. And like when you wear a wig or something, it, it just makes you more sick because it's hot, it's itchy, it's uncomfortable, it's like the worst thing. It started to come out one night and I took a razor and shaved a mohawk in my head and <laughs> laughed around about that. They nicknamed me Q because it's like the head of a Q bald, so I laughed at that. I lost my taste buds, which is... I hated that because I could I wouldn't I didn't eat the entire month not just because I couldn't eat because there was no point to eat for me I couldn't taste it so why would I eat I'd taste I'd bite into like a hot dog or something I almost cry because I couldn't taste it. Day four, Mario the guide has found a better campsite. Revived, confident, the group leaves the steep slopes and heads into a remote valley. There's no other human being within hundreds of kilometers. Computer games and cell phones belong to another world. They have each other and the bright Arctic summer. <laughs> Good. I'm an excellent artist. As of yet, we have not seen an animal, only their droppings. <laughs> It's become possible to talk about the scary stuff. Oh. Yeah, there's three of them moving. Just knowing that I can be outdoors and alone and really just brightens it all up, you know? If a person can find themselves out here, like they can find what they like out here in the nature, I think that can help them heal. I think that can uh, motivate them so that they they can heal, really. You are the best liar, I think. Do it. 
Mario has decided on a new route. They'll cross to the next range, and then the big challenge, climb Mount McGill, the jagged peak that dominates this landscape. The mountain looks down upon them, saying, try me. Then nature adds a twist. The wind picks up, the temperatures plunge. People shut down. It's like the bad effects of chemotherapy. When you're going through chemo, you change as a person. And when you leave like your group of friends, they move on and they grow, they, they grow into the way that they're going to be. So when you're like gone for a year, then you come back, they're not there. That was the, one of the things that hurt the most when you try and come back and you just don't come back. You just don't fit in the way you did before. Day seven, a valley with no name. Who knows when human beings were last here? Today, they climb the mountain. go to that summit before I went I told them the summit is one to reach but the summit will be our summit so all together we go and if what we can do as a team is to reach the middle of the mountain we will have a beautiful middle of the mountain a beautiful summit and that will be our summit but we'll try to go as far as we can Love, I guess, for my family really helped. Knowing that they were there, you know, uh, I always felt that uh, I was gonna pull through. They always made me feel that I was gonna pull through, that it was gonna be a breeze, and that, you know, we'll come through it together and everything. So I never felt alone in it. Like, I always had support. Always my family, but even friends' support sometimes too helped. Je m'en souviens une fois euh, en particulier après ma rechute. C'était dans la, la deux semaines que je suis allée chez moi entre ma rechute et la griffe. Puis j'étais dans mon lit le soir, puis là je me suis mis à pleurer. Puis je pleurais, puis j'avais peur, j'avais peur de mourir. Ça, ça a été une fois là, vraiment dure. Je pense que c'est là que j'ai plus pleuré. Puis j'étais toute seule, puis je voulais pas monter en haut voir mes parents pour le dire. Tu sais, je pense qu'il fallait que je vive ça toute seule. Je pense qu'ils même pas au courant de ça. Je pense que je les ai même pas dit. <rire> The mountain seems to be receding, taunting them. It's testing their willpower as much as their bodies, the same willpower they found to beat back the cancer. They walk close together for the final assault. I think I had lots of encouragement from my family and like all my relatives, my grandmother. She was praying for me the entire time, she said, and she had all her friends praying for me, so I just had lots of support, and it, just, I, it felt great, so I, I just didn't want to disappoint them. <laughs> so I just knew I was going to make it. It never sunk in my head that I had cancer until um, near the end of my treatment when I got that fever. I had a fever of 106. And it wasn't until I couldn't like breathe without reminding myself. And I thought I was dying. Like that night, I really was scared. And uh, I thought about my mom. I thought I'm never gonna see her again. And then, and then um, one of my friends, and then uh, I just closed my eyes. But then I'm just like, no, I can't, I have to, I have to get out of this because it's like that would, it would be the worst death because <laughs> you went through so much, almost a year of chemo just to give up then. And I, so I was lying there and I could feel my heartbeat. I could just trying to breathe. I was just lying there, I couldn't move. But I made myself open my eyes because if I didn't, I think I would have gone.
personally, I think that it's all mental. I think healing, like, uh, it is have to do with the, the medicine helps and everything, but I think if you don't think you're going to pull through mentally, I don't think you're going to pull through at all. Actually, I never thought once in the entire time that I wouldn't make it. So I think I just kept a positive attitude. I think that's what helped me out. The summit is close enough to touch, but the last part is the steepest. I believed in myself the whole